Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series on the channel. You're hopping back into Red Flood. This time we are on the version that you can actually find on the Steam Workshop at this very moment. I guess technically yesterday when this video is coming out, but it's fine. So today we are going to be playing as Avant-Garde France in particular. We are going to be going down the Anarcho-Primitive uh, tree here. And if you don't know what uh, Anarcho-Primitivism is, it's essentially saying that all technology is trash and things are better when we're all hunter-gatherers. So, uh, the reason I want to do that tree is because it's very, very strange. If you, you know, we can look at some of these focus down here. One of them is burned down all the buildings. It destroys every infrastructure in the entire country. Uh, this one right here destroys all the civilian factories and military factories in the country as well. So once we do these two, we will literally have no infrastructure and no factories. So... That sounds very strange, obviously. Uh, we also got every man a hunter. 50% rural cool population. Uh, we have multi-population plus 70%. 25% attack and defense. Um, well, there's some other ones down here as well. You know, 500% recruitable population factor. So we're going to try to flood Germany and basically everybody with a bunch of, like, shitty bowmen. One of them also is that we get a claim right here. Claim on all of Europe. So all... we basically be like a European conquest of making everybody uh, into hunter-gatherers. We'll see how that works out. I, I don't really know if it's going to work out well, to be completely honest, seeing as we will basically have no way to build anything new. So until we get to that point, until we get down to here, which actually won't even take that long, it's only going to take about uh, three focuses, we got to try to build up as much as we possibly can at this very moment. Because we're going to lose all these factories as soon as we become anarcho-primitives. Which is a little bit... You know, it, it's... It's just kind of strange. Uh, get the total artillery, I think that should be fine. Build up some light tanks, and then try to build up some aircraft as well. I think that should be okay, we got some free civilian factories. Again... It says it destroys infrastructure, and it destroys factories. Strangely enough, one, it doesn't seem like a, it might not count naval dockyards. Um, it doesn't mention anything about air bases. It doesn't mention anything about land forts. So I think just building land forts across the entirety of our border with Germany might actually be the correct play here. Because I don't think these are going to get destroyed. I know, it's a very, it's a very strange way of playing uh, Hearts of Iron 4. It's, it's different. Um, it's very, very different. So let's go for making our troops a little bit better. Research bleed we do still want. I mean, we still want these as well. I don't know if we want construction speed though, because again, we're going to basically have no factories. At all. So, you know, it, it's definitely different. I definitely don't want the assault rifle here. That's going to be a little bit way too ahead of time. So we might as well get it, I think. Actually, let's get fuel silo. Like, uh, so we also got some more population, dockyards, let us just start building up some convoys. I think we definitely want some of those right away. And then we'll start building up some... Nothing else, because apparently we don't have anything else that is unlocked. Attention. So we got a bunch of divisions, we're just going to want to put them essentially on the border with Germany for right now. Uh, we do want a full 24 if I can get that. I don't know how many men we actually have. I know we do still have territory in um, Africa. We still have some of our colonial holdings. So that's nice. Uh, you guys basically just attack your way to the Rhineland right here. So I did read up a little bit more about the actual history of the mod. Uh, so, you know, World War I happened. Nobody really won at all. Like, everybody just kind of died. The Austro Hungarian Empire fell apart, the British Empire kind of fell apart. I mean, they lost most of India because of internal uh, strife. They had, the United States and Britain had a, you know, Great Depression, I think in 1931. But the United, but the Germany was unaffected by that because the uh, communists got into power because of like Rosa Luxemburg and the Spartacist. So they were more or less uh, insulated from that because they didn't really have much outside trade because everybody didn't like them. Russia has basically gone into the hands of many, many uh, warlords. That still, you know, has some loyalty to the Russian Empire, but not too, too much. Um, and I'm hoping probably when Russia actually gets their focus tree completely finished, they might just rebel. Or something like that. And then... Yeah, we have basically have gone for... Uh... A far-right acceleration estate. Led by, uh, Artist. 
whatever the hell that actually means. What does it mean I have a country run by artists? I have no idea. But... Uh, we do need a field marshal. Put you guys in here. Do I have enough commanders for this? I do. Excellent. It's nice to actually have commanders as opposed to um, Russia, who actually had zero. But some troops onto this front. Um, you guys can also still be part of purple. You guys can. I mean, we probably do want some troops ready to go for uh, an invasion of Italy. Because I don't know. Does Italy have a tree? It does not at the moment. So I'm not too sure what can happen with Italy. Get some of our new divisions over here ready to go to invade, um... To invade Italian colonial holdings if we have to. Uh, so I need to a general as well. Who else do we have? You guys down here. I know... Actually, I'm going to shoot you guys up to the north. And that should, I think, be fine. Decision available. Uh, Army Navy experience. Of course, we do want that. Thank you. We are going to get some more events decision down here later I believe but that really depends on if uh... I mean I think you still stay accelerationist when you can become anarcho primitivist it's just a very very strange uh, situation so uh, we need you guys basically prepare just to invade Wallonia you guys will try to take your way down to uh, Caligari, and then you guys will basically just try to push your way uh, down towards uh, Egypt. Egypt right now is under the actually it's under control of nobody. It's not really a part of the uh, the Commonwealth, but apparently not. So we are low on supplies. So we'll trade a little bit with uh, Portugal. We'll trade a little bit with British Malaysia. So Germany right now has about, they start off with about 40, 45 divisions. Okay, it's not too bad. We have 46. I mean, we have abolished the French army, which is, again, not the, the greatest thing. To sure, military coup cannot happen, but we're going to have a, a narco-primitivist coup. We're actually losing stability. Divided nation, minus 75%. Ooh, that's pretty bad. Split between rural and urban. I mean, we'll definitely remove... The divide between urban and rural once we blow up every single building in the country. So we're going to howl with the wolves. Political power goes up. Monthly population goes up by 50%. Yeah, I don't know. It's very... It's almost like we're going to have a bunch of units, but they're all going to be more or less garbage. Because we will just not actually have um, the capacity... We really, we start with zero planes. We won't even have the, like, we won't have the capacity to really do much. Okay, so the flag glitch is still in the game, unfortunately. I mean, I know Wallonia can join us. Uh, it's in here somewhere. I mean, there's some other stuff down here as well, I believe. Yeah. The full speed into the world, just, world just like each kind goes down by 25%. It also, um, yeah, Romania can join us. Or Wallonia can join us, I guess I should say. And this is basically, you know, us trying to attack Germany, trying to attack either the British, and also doing some stuff with Austria. If I get Austria to agree to my anarcho primitivist lifestyle, then I'll definitely, uh, you know, like them in here. They're actually going to strengthen the ultranationalists anyway, so maybe they will uh, want to join our faction anyways. We do have Fume, and we do have uh, basically this guy over here in Georgia. So a friend of old France, uh, Colonel Maurice de Saint Pierre. The sacred man, or what's the scared man? A scarred man. Be it phosphate gas, shrap shrapnel, or the effects of sustained daily bridge breaking, his body bore the scars of life. He wasn't even 30 goddamn years old, and yet he felt like a man thrice his age. That was France today. Ruled by a man, a madman populated by the scared and maimed and the walking dead. All pride was wrung out of the country and its people. Its dignity bled out in the fields of Verdun and Champagne. Uh, and it was a sorry state. And Maurice could not blame those who let it deteriorate further, but he was not that kind of man. Here on the front, uh, Port de la Liberation de la France de Futurisme headquarters, uh, Maurice sipped a bitter cocktail of cheap gin and even cheaper soda water. Couldn't even get the fucking tonic stuff. Sir, said Private Jean-Paul, handed him a letter. We just received this communique from, from the Paracel. Apparently, it's exceptionally urgent. 
Poor Jean Paul, 19 years old, completely lost. His entire life plan was set up on joining the army only for that rat face corpse fucker. Jeez, okay. Uh, Arton to disband the army. Most everyone here consisted of leftovers of that moronic move. Disbanding the army wasn't enough to stop the army. No, leaving the hundreds of thousands of young men unemployed, trained in combat, and bitter. That was Ordon's down, uh, downfall. Maurice unfolded the letter and read it. Dear members of the front, my name is not important. All you need to know is that me, is that of me, that I am the friend of old France. As it stands, you and I have much uh, to benefit from each other. I have uh, long known of the partisan movements against the wretched Art Arton. Is Arton the leader here? Yes. Um, I have long known of the partisan movements. Okay, okay, and I support them wholeheartedly. It is the utmost important that uh, to me that sanity, that order, that anything. The damn chaos that surrounds us be like a suffocating gas is annihilated. I merely ask for your aid. I wish for you to help me in your noble goal. That there's a street in can Ku uh, Put this letter with your response on the back. Yes or no at 13. Uh, okay. And it's yes. Okay. So we're going to say yes on the back. Because we're definitely going to try to overthrow this man. Who does he think he is? I want to live in the mud. You son of a bitch. The future is prehistory. Uh, when we find roots of our misery, it shall bear the name of Kaiser. Le Patron announced today with Aguirre to side. When we lived at the age of druids and nature, we were free. Only when brought under the, the Latin yoke did we know stagnation and misery. Therefore, it was revised the lasting decadence of our, la uh, our late imperial uh, carcass. We shall destroy the central demagogues, the papal fools, the accursed uh, plow, which has enslaved uh, our soul. Throughout the streets, Druidist legionnaires burned effigies of Kai Caesar, Einstein, Ford, and all other despots of machinery. Children lined up gleefully to uh, receive face paintings of Celtic runes upon their face, as these same runes are carved into every building in Lys Salie. Despite massive support amongst the rural population, some traders within our industry cannot accept a rightful expulsion from our society. Therefore, we have no mercy for such treason. They shall be, they shall feel justice by our wolves. Just um, at some point. We want to go for a way for the state. Construction speed goes out by 100%, which is why I didn't think construction speed plus 10% really mattered too much. Early in the morning, uh, Maurice was woken up by from his dreams. The constant replies of Verdun at haunting his nights. One of his commanders had uh, uh, shaken him awake and hushed, excited desperation in his voice. Maurice, the crazy bastard, did it. At least 15 different crazy bastards with 15 different insane ideas ran through his mind. Uh, right, uh, do we need to clean up? No, look, just clean yourself up. You got a package. Maurice, after a shot of strong liquor and a shave with a rusted razor, stumbled out of his office into the headquarters proper. Everyone was awake and air buzzed with excitement as they waited for Maurice. They were all huddled around the radio listening in on the news. You're listening to the radio? In my anarcho-primitive society, I, you are going to be executed. Oh, spirit above, the newscaster said, we sh uh, still have no sign of the mayor. The fires reached the second floor as the firefighters aren't able to get inside. As the commander had said, there was indeed a package beside the radio. It was wrapped in a thick brown paper tied with twine like a Christmas gift. On the top was written in pencil only a few words to a fellow friend of old France. Maurice opened it slowly, not sure what to expect. Inside was another letter folded into a box of cigars. Old cigars from before the war. Probably kept in some basement for uh, decades before being rediscovered. He opened his letter, uh, his hand shaking. Dearest friends, as you uh, have asked me to, I asked that I sent this package ahead of time so you may have received it either before or after I have acted. I am sure that you have heard it on the radio about uh, Shan's poor mayor. No matter. I believe that this has consolidated our friendship. We have important matters to discuss once we, which I insist shall be soon. The fate of France is now bound to you with me and with every uh, fellow friend who recognizes our tone's government and its falsehood it is. Of whatever shape uh, the reborn France may take, I know its birth shall be uneasy and bloody. I shall. I can't supply men and material for you. Simply tell me what you need. Yes, a friend indeed. Tell every cell about our accomplishments. I mean, you listen to the radio, so you might get shot in the back of the head. We'll see. It depends on how I'm feeling that day. We did get a research speed upgrade. Um, I guess we go for the four percent research speed. I mean, I guess maybe we'll get the 10% upgrade, because maybe that'll only be a 90% penalty instead? I'm not too sure. Uh, the future of France. Uh, the friend of old France had come to the headquarters of the Saint Cell, brilliant blue eyes shown behind his thick cloth. Probably an Arab or one of the unlucky bastards of the French governor in a maid. That would explain the clothing, Maurice figured. The Arabs uh, had strange customs and stranger dress. Why would one insist on so many layers in a desert it was beyond him? But it didn't matter. All that it meant was that he drank uh, from his wine glass of straw. Definitely strange. Maurice didn't feel like criticizing a new friend or the oddities of his dress was worthwhile. Maurice, my friend, he said. 
I do not know what you envision for the state of France, but let me lay out my vision to the world. We both wish to see Ostrad but foes, but for us to establish ourselves as a contender for French leadership, we must choose the direction we wish to take. So we can go for a socialist paradise. I mean, we definitely want to go. F I mean, okay, we can't keep going accelerationist. A national rebirth. Yes. That seems like it could be fine. Shooter in the capital. As the whole nation watching Lee upon Argyr's ascension to the second in command, it seemed like a good second win for the futurist cause worldwide. There he stood, a glorious sign of futurism, hair uh, gleaming, smile shining, eyes glowing. Lee Patron stood even more beautiful uh, and proud than he had his deputy, his spear radiating from across all of France. However, as the crowd roared, uh, for these new declarations of a, a futurist brighthood, a treacherous and despicable shadow loomed within the passionate patriots. The shadow later revealed to be the strange Escaron fanatic, unable to accept France's true destiny, approached the great Argon, or Agir, as he was spread his joy to the crowd. Upon being within a three meters of our beloved druid, the assassin pulled out a handgun and fired at Agir. The crowd uh, recalled in horror, and several brave and glorious patriots tackled the gunman, beating him to death with a wave of her great. However, a shot still left the gun, and struck him in the chest I did try to do a um you know try to make sure I can actually get this to work off camera to make sure I actually chose the right events so two gods in a hospital room great patreon I still don't feel so good I gotta confess to Atrid in the hospital bed uh my body just feels horrible like insects crawling through my very soul well you were shot, Archid chuckled, putting his hand on the protege's shoulder. No, it's not that. This body is just flesh, a mere mass of atoms hurling towards the future. It's my soul which aches. I close my eyes and I see the flash, feel the sting, hear the screams. God, those screams. Every moment, those screams ring out out of consciousness, screaming, yelling, serenading for my demise. I wish they leave my head. Archid leaned over uh, to Edgar and whispered greatly, gently in his ear. Don't worry, I hear them too. Uh, his eyes widened and others. So why are they here? What do they want? They want what's best. Listen to them. They know what they know more than you. Here's what they want. Akir complimented. He gave an uneasy smile. I need to face this blinding light head on. The light of science, of reason, and the stamp plow itself. I know my destiny. And we can do away with the state. The states are for nerds. We don't need that shit. All we need is a 90% penalty to everything. Which, you know, doesn't seem like it'd be great. I mean, we do have a new flag, which is now it's three wolves and a skull. So it's, it's a little bit strange. Uh, the future is French. It wasn't long before the propaganda poster started being plastered everywhere. The heritage of France shall not be lost. Death to those who wish to see it burned in revolution. France has been strangled. Will you save her? Maurice walked through the streets, trying not to gaze too long at them. He did not know if the police were watching or even if the police, uh, people were paying attention to the posters. He just wanted to walk down the street. A friend of old France was valuable. In fact, without his help, it was more than likely that Maurice would be in yet uh, another drunken stupor, waiting for his day to be die. Now there was purpose. Now there was action. There was hope for free France spring forth uh, from the well of spring, bringing water to the thirsty. It was in his own way beautiful, but by God above, he was not used to this work. It was hard work, stressful work. He could not. He could feel his muscles tighten. It was stress. Even if he was sitting every morning, he would wake up and notice a fresh fallen uh, hairs on his pillow. But none of that mattered. There was a revival in French glory that he would be gladly work his hands to the bone. Like, what even is this flag? It's just wolves and a skull. It's very strange. And Austria's declared war in the Austrian revolt. We saw that at the end of the, um, uh, not the end, the very beginning of the Russian campaign as well. Yeah, so the headache. A lot of, there's a lot of uh, flavor text in this. A friend of old France, Emmanuel, loved the name for himself. It was simply inspired. Uh, it was simply inspired, simply completely inspired. He sat in his cafe, sipping away from some espresso. It tasted like absolute shit. Yet another product of insanity that it consumes France. If you could not rely on Parisian cafes who have decent coffee, then what the hell could you rely on? Nothing. That's what. The coffee didn't need to taste good, though. He just felt off today. Like something else was nagging in his mind. Somewhere in the back, inexpressible and, and constant, it felt like something was pulling at him. But as he finished his espresso, it tipped well. The waitress, the waitstaff deserved it. After all, working uh, for a living was respectful. It was good. It was a type of France he wanted to see. He wanted to promote. They didn't even blink when he requested a straw, which he drank from his espresso. Of course, people stared at him. They always did. But no one could see his face under the cloth. That was good. He needed to be hidden. Even if the cloth was made, made of sand out, he could just go to Algeria and lay low there. A black car drove to the cafe. He got inside. The driver was told curtly to go to uh, sand. 
and drop him off at Main Street. After that, who knows? Me and Maurice discussed plans to drink that man's awful, awful alcohol, but he had to sip some bitter wine in order to destroy Artunt. He would. Headache will go away, Emmanuel. Do not worry. But I think with that, it's going to be a good time to end this episode. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Anthem. If you enjoyed, run a thumbs up. If not, enjoy, you can always thumb down. Want to see more, subscribe, and goodbye.